Hello, everyone. Welcome to Rich Code's first ACSL lesson, number one. Today's topic is going to be number systems. So just in case you were wondering, ACSL stands for American Computer Science League, and it's a global computer science competition, and it's made up of four separate contests, um, contests one, two, three, and four. And if you do well on those four contests, you can get invited to the finals next year in May. So my name is Richard and I'm currently a sophomore. Um, last year I got um, the bronze medal in the finals of the ACSL competition. And I also got a five on both AP computer science exams last year. And some of the content I'll be teaching today is also on the AP Computer Science Principles exam, um, which is binary and number systems. So let's get started. Okay, so the goal of today's lesson is first, we're going to learn what are number systems. And there's actually several types of number systems that we use in computer science. Um, you're probably familiar with decimal number system already because that's the number system we use every day to count in but computers actually use different number systems, for example, binary. And um, we'll also learn um, number conversions, which is how, to, how do you convert between different number systems, for example, from decimal to binary or um, some other number systems. Okay, so before we get started, um, I have um, linked some resources here that you can use if um, there's anything you don't understand or if you want further materials to use to help study for the exam. The first exam, I believe, starts in November, so you have some time to um, learn this content and do some practice problems with some of the past problems um, in the ACSL contest. So um, I highly recommend you to go look at the wiki page. Um, this is um, made by ACSL and it's pretty helpful. So what is the decimal number system? The decimal number system is the number system that we use to count. For example, when I say like the number 154, that is expressed in the decimal number system. So the decimal number system has 10 digits, as you can imagine, since decimal means 10. And those digits are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we can use these diff um, 10 different digits to express different numbers. For example, over here, the number 79,032 can actually be written out as seven times 10 to the power of four plus nine times 10 to the power of three plus zero times 10 to the power of two plus three times 10 to the power of one plus two times 10 to the number of zero. So most of you are probably already familiar with this. Um, so now I'm gonna ask everyone a question, which is why do we use the decimal number system? Does anyone want to unmute or you can answer in the chat? Okay, so someone in the chat said it's easiest and it's easiest because we're used to it at this point, but Yes, because it's simple. Um, so someone, Carl said we have 10 fingers and that is probably the most simple explanation for why we use the decimal number system. We have 10 fingers and we use 10 fingers to count. That's how we all learned how to count when we were like babies. So we have 10 fingers and that is why we count in the number system. And also because it's easier to express in this way and it's most convenient for us. And we also have 10 toes, that's right. Okay, so does anyone have any questions? If not, we will move on. How about the Egyptians and Aztecs? So I am not too familiar about like the history or like ancient cultures. Um, I'm pretty sure they also had their own counting systems and I would guess they also used the decimal number system. And the decimal number system is also called base 10, if you were wondering. So base 10 basically means there's 10 digits. So that's why it's also called base 10. Okay, so let's move on. Now, 
um, computers have their own number systems. Computers don't actually use the decimal system. They use something called the binary number system. So um, the prefix bi means two. So in the binary system, they only use two digits, zero and one. So whenever you see this little subscript here, the two um, after the number, that tells you that we're in the binary system. So for example, here, one zero one zero um, in binary can be expressed as one times two to the power of three plus zero times two to the power of two plus one times two to the power of one plus zero times two to the power of zero. So base 10 means, um, yes, numbers are made of multiples of 10. So in base two or the binary number system, numbers are made up of powers of two. So that is what this expanded notation looks like. We are expressing, we are expressing each digit as a power of two. Now, most computers use the binary system. Um, does anyone want to take a guess why that might be the case? Yes, a computer has basically on off switches. So that is where the zeros and one comes from. Binary system is more simple because there are less digits to use. Yes, so the most um, simple explanation would be computers are basically made up of electrical signals and each signal can be either on or off. So one represents on and zero represents off. So that is why computers use the binary number system. And we will um, look at this in more detail. So here's a picture of a switch. So off would be zero, one would be on. So how do we count in decimal? So basically um, we count by going up all the way to the highest digit, but what happens when you go um, even more than the highest digit? For example, if you if you're counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, how do you keep how, what happens when you add one, I guess? So basically, um, we do something called carry over. So once you get to the highest digit and you cannot go anymore, then we have to carry over. So nine becomes 10, so we have to add a digit. So when we get to the, the highest digit, we have to basically add a new digit and that's called carrying over. So does anyone have any questions? You can feel free to unmute. Oops. No, okay. So now the question is how do we count in binary if there's only two digits? So we only have the digits zero and one. So Can I say zero, that? yes, go ahead. It's, a lot, it's kind of like, yeah, it's one. So I'm gonna write it. So I'm gonna do, do this, okay? So like one, zero, one. Like this one stands for one. This one, stand, this one stands for two. This stands for four and you keep multiplying it. So let, let's say that's for like the fifth one. And if this is a one, this is an eight. This is supposed to be eight, eight, and this is sixteen, and so on. Basically, yes, that's right. Um, but I want to approach this in a more simple way. So let's just say we're counting. So let's say we have decimal and we have binary. Okay, so zero in decimal is still zero in binary. And one in decimal is still one in binary because binary has enough digits to accommodate for zero and one. But what happens when we get into two in decimal? Um, there's no, remember there's no digit two in binary. So how should we manage that? So same thing in decimal. In decimal, we have to carry over when we have reached the maximum digit. So we have to carry over in binary as well since one is the maximum digit. So many of you have already said it in the chat, it will be become it will become one zero. So 
yeah, we have reached um, the maximum digit and now we have to carry over to one zero. So does anyone have any questions about this step? Okay, so now what happens if we have three? This one is just one one because if we add one um, to the rightmost digit, we can still handle that. So it becomes one one. And four would be one zero zero since we have reached the maximum digit and we have we have to carry over here. So if we keep going, we will see it's gonna look something like this. And okay, so now I want to pause and let's make some observations about this. So what are some things you notice? So I notice that whenever you have powers of two, you always have a one in the front followed by many zeros. So this is a useful observation that will help us when we're doing problem solving. So this is a basic decimal to binary equivalence. Um, so it's useful to sort of have this memorized. Um, you don't have to memorize it, but you just have to know, um, you just have to observe the patterns that arise when you're counting in binary. So okay, does anyone have any questions? If not, then we'll move on. Okay, so basically on the right here is what I just um, wrote down, but this goes all the way to 15. And yes, the class is recorded. So you'll also notice um, the number that is one before a power of two is always gonna consist of only ones. For example, um, let's see, two is a power of two, so the number before it is going to only have ones. Four is a power of two, and the number before it, which is three, is only going to have ones. And eight is a power of two, and seven is the number that is one before it, and the binary only has ones in it. And you'll see the same thing with 15. So these are just um, a few useful observations to make. And for the ACSL contest, I also recommend everyone to be really familiar with the powers of two. So you should um, know like at least up to like 1,024, I would say. Yeah, so it's useful to know, um, to memorize the basic powers of two because that will make it easier when you're doing the ACSL contest. So these are the first 10 powers of two. If it's the number after a power of two, then it is the first and last digit one and all the other digits zero. Yes, that is correct. And someone asks, is this math? Um, this is math, but it's all it's like the intersection of math and computer science because com um, computer science at the fundamental level is basically math. So computer science and math are um, really similar to each other. And that's why having a strong um, basis in math will be helpful for learning computer science. So I, re I recommend all of you to know the basic powers of two in, um, which is just like powers of two, in, which is in base 10. And that will help you when you're converting to binary and when you're um, doing calculations in binary. And yes, there is a game called 2048, which basically like adds up powers of two. Um, that, that's a cool game. I would actually recommend you play it um, if it helps you memorize the powers of two. Yeah, so there's a game called 2048, which is the next power of two after 1024. Okay, so this is not really related to the contest, but it's fun to just mention it, okay. So now let's move on. Okay, so how do we convert something from binary to decimal? So this is the part where we have to learn how to convert. So now we, that we know what binary is, now we have to know how to convert a number from binary to let's say decimal. So 
Let's recall how you can represent numbers in base 10 as powers of 10. So in the same way, you can represent numbers in binary in powers of two. So for example, um, over here, the number, the number 1010 in binary. So each digit actually represents a different power of two. So the leftmost digit represents two to the power of zero. This um, represents two to the power of one. This represents two to the power of two. And this represents two to the power of three. Okay, so when we convert from binary to decimal, we will basically multiply the number by its power or its like digit and we'll add them up. So the zeros, you don't have to worry about them because they don't hold any real value. So over here we can see, and when you add this up, this becomes two plus eight plus two. So this is 10. So one zero one zero in binary is the same thing as 10 in decimal. So if this is confusing, I'll try to make it more simple. For example, let's take the number, I'm gonna make something up, 234 in base 10. So by the way, when I don't like write the little subscript here, um, it basically by default, it's base 10 because that is what we are used to and that's what we count in. So how can I write this? How can I express the number 234 with powers of 10? So this is not binary, but this is um, just useful to know when we are using binary. So this, um, this digit right here represents 10 to the power of zero, or you may know this as the ones digit. They are the same thing. This one is 10 to the power of one. This is the tens digit, and this is 10 to the power of two. So you also know this as the hundreds digit. So basically you can write 234 as two times 10 to the power of two plus three times 10 to the power of one plus four times 10 to the power of zero. So knowing this, we can apply the same thing to binary. So that is how we get this part over here. Does everyone understand this? Okay, then let's move on. So this is how to convert from binary to decimal. Okay, so here's a more complicated example, but we do it using the same way. 100101. So we can write this as, so um, a useful trick I have is before you expand it out, you might easily make mistakes. So I like to write out the, like, the digits before it. So now I know this one represents two to the power of zero. And this one on the left represents two to the power of six or no, one, zero, one, two, three. Oops, I skipped, oops, that's embarrassing. Five, sorry. So now I can, so now I know, um, so it's, and be very careful with the zeros. You don't, the zeros, um, don't mean anything, but when you're actually multiplying it out, you, it's best to still write the zeros so that you won't miss anything or you won't uh, miscalculate anything. So the rest is just basic algebra. So this is 32 plus four plus one. So this is 37 in decimal. Okay, so is it like the 1664 bit stuff? So, that's a good question. A bit is basically one unit that can represent either a zero or a one. So that's not really related to like converting between binary and decimal, but that's um, one unit of information that's in binary. So either zero or one. So that a bit is like the fundamental um, thing about computer science. So when you say your phone has how, how much storage, that's the same thing as, um, so one byte is actually equal to eight bits. So that's um, outside of the scope of this contest, I think. So you don't have to worry too much about it, but just know that one bit is either zero or one. So it's just one unit basically.
Okay, let's move on. So now I think this is um, harder, which is converting backwards from base 10 to base two. So from decimal to binary. So one way you could do it is do the reverse. And I'll show you a shortcut um, after this. So doing the reverse basically means, so let's say we wanted to convert 37 in base 10 to something in base two. So we don't know what that is. So doing the reverse basically means we will write out the expression in base two, and we don't know what these values are going to be yet. So we have to basically test or like guess and check basically. So the first question I ask myself is what is the greatest power of two that is less than 37? So that would be 32. Um, you can always check to make sure. 64 would be too big and 16 would be too small. We always wanna find the greatest power of two that is less than the actual number. So that is 32 in this case. So you can, you can rewrite this as 37 is equal to one times two to the power of five. So two to, two to the power of five is 32. And then we don't know the rest. So we'll, we have to figure out the rest right now. So, so far we have represented 32, but we want to convert 37. So we need five more. We are short by five right now. So now I ask myself, what is the greatest power of two that is less than five? And that would be four. You can always check. Eight would be too big and two is not the greatest that is less than five. So now I know that 37 is equal to one times two to the power of five plus one times two to the power of three because two to the power of three or no, two to the power of two, because we said four was um, the greatest power of two that is less than five. And we have to add something else that we don't know yet. So right now, this is 36. So we need one more. We are so short by one. So what would the last um, number be? Yes, it would be one. So that would be one times two to the power of zero. So anything to the power of zero is one. Okay, so now that we have written it out in its expanded binary notation, this is not the final answer. So let's go back to, um, because we left out some zeros that I didn't really include in here, but you should include it so that you don't miss any zeros that are just placeholders. So we said 37 is equal to one times two to the power of five. So the next one is two to the power of two, but let's not forget about two to the power of four and two to the power of three. So let's just add zeros as placeholders. And next one is gonna be one times two to the power of two. And let's, I'm gonna erase some stuff. This is getting messy, okay. We don't have two to the power of one, but let's still write that out and use a zero as a placeholder because that is necessary for the final representation of in binary. So the last is gonna be one times two to the power of zero. So now let's just look at the coefficient that is in front and that is your final answer. So the final answer is one, zero, zero, one zero one. Okay. So does anyone have any questions about how to do this um, procedure? No, okay. So let me just summarize it really quick. So basically when you have to convert a number from decimal to binary, we have to first write it out in its expanded binary notation. And so we don't know what these question marks are now. So we can use a bit of guess and check and find what those coefficients should be. And don't forget the zeros. And your final answer would be just all the coefficients 
um, put together. So the final answer is 100101 base two. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about a shortcut. Okay. So someone in the chat said, I've heard that you can find the remainder when divide 37 by two and keep dividing the thing uh, and after get the remainder in backwards order. So that is basically what the shortcut is. So let's take 37, um, the same number. So this shortcut is basically like reverse division. That's how I like to call it. Um, so basically when you do regular division, you, you do this, but for this trick, I call it reverse division. So instead you do this. Okay, so um, I'll first go through this um, and it'll make more sense um, if you just watch how I do it. So 37 divided by two, what is that? 37 divided by two is 18 with a remainder of one. Okay, so let's not um, do like 18.5. Let's just um, count the remainder separately. So it's 18 and we have a remainder of one. So the one goes here. Okay, so the one over here is the remainder. Now we will keep dividing. What's 18 divided by two? That is nine. And do we have a remainder? We don't have a remainder. 18 is divis divisible by two. So let's put a zero here because we don't have a remainder. And let's keep dividing. What's nine divided by two? It's four with a remainder of one. So let's put the one over here and we will keep doing that. Four divided by two is two with a remainder of zero. And two divided by two is one with a remainder of zero. So we will keep going until we get to one. And the, the answer is you just go, you just look at the remainders and go in reverse. So the final answer is 100101, which is what we got using the previous method. So what I mean by reverse is I'm just going this way. So 100101. So that is the final answer. So this is a shortcut um, for how to find the binary representation of a decimal number. Okay, this is a little bit different from prime factorization. And the last number cannot be zero. You, um, if the last number is zero, then you probably did something wrong. And also a helpful note, which is the remainder should always be either zero or one since you're dividing by two. If you get a remainder that is not zero or one, that also means you're probably may think making some math mistakes somewhere in the process. And the final number cannot be zero. Um, this only applies to binary though. If we're talking about like base eight, which we'll get to later, your remainder can be greater than two. So, I mean, it can be something other than zero or one. Okay, so does anyone have any questions about this method? Okay, if not, we will continue. So it just has to be less than the divisor. Yes, the remainder will always be less than the number you're dividing by. But your remainder can be zero, which means it's divisible. So we just talked about the binary number system. I like that shortcut. Yes, it's a very helpful um, shortcut. I think it saves a lot of time. Uh, okay, so next I'm going to talk about the hexadecimal number system. So the hexadecimal number system is also used by some computers, and this is also called base 16. So hex basically means like hexadecimal means 16. So this is base 16, as um, it's also called the hexadecimal number system, or I can just shorten it as hex sometimes. So what is one um, shortcoming of using the binary 
um, number system to represent big numbers. So that is like something that's not so convenient about using the binary system, which is that when you try to represent big numbers, it's way too long. So for example, the number 1,234,567 in binary is this long chain of zeros and ones, and it can get pretty long. So that is why sometimes we use different number systems because binary, um, it, when you use binary, the numbers can be sometimes pretty long. So we have we have only seven digits in decimal, but in binary, we have like over 10 digits. Um, okay, so in, in the hexadecimal system, since it's called base 16, that means we have 16 digits. So the digits, um, but we only have like zero to nine. So what happens when you go beyond nine? Then we use letters. So A is basically 11, B is 12, C is 13, D is 14, E is 15, and F is 16. So we have a total of 16 digits here. And some computer programmers also use this number system because as you'll see, um, it's sometimes pretty convenient because the numbers are a lot shorter than let's say if you're using binary. So we'll talk about how to count in the base 16 um, um, after this slide. So what is the B? Um, I think this B just represents, it's in binary. Um, sometimes in when you have like long numbers and you're using a calculator, sometimes you'll see like in base 10, let's say you'll see like E something that it just represents 10 to the power of something. What is after 16? So we'll talk about how to carry over um, in the next slide. So all you have to know for now is base 16, there are 16 digits, which is zero to nine and then A to F. What yeah, about so 10? What about 10? Oh, right. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. Um, a is actually 10, not 11. Yes. So let me redo this. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So A represents 10 and F represents 15. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to carry over. So 0 to 9 for a decimal and hex is the same thing. So because in hex, we have more than enough digits to accommodate. But when you get from zero, I mean, from 10 to 15, then we use the letters. So 10 is equal to A, 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 is D, and 14 is E, 15 is F. So you don't have to memorize like 10 is A, 11 is B. Um, you can just like write it out and each number will correspond to the letters. So how long is this class? This class is one hour, it ends at seven. Okay, so now when we get to 15 or we, when we get to F, which is the highest digit in hexadecimal, we have to carry over. So what is 16 in hexadecimal? So we have to carry over, so it's actually one zero. So basically the digit on the right becomes the smallest digit and we increase a digit on the to the left of it. So now we can keep going. Um, this part is almost the same. We're basically just adding the units digit, right? This this is how we learned how to count in decimal. It's really similar in hex. But once we get to one F, we have to carry over. So it becomes two zero. And then the rest of it is just the same. So 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, all the way to 2F. So does anyone have any questions about this? OK, so we will um, do more stuff with binary. So converting from hexadecimal to decimal. 
So same thing, we can expand. This is similar to converting from binary to decimal. Um, so we have 2e5 base 16. How do we convert that to base 10? So same thing, the digit on the, so let's see, we have 2e5, 2e5 base 16. The digit on the right represents 16 to the power of zero. This digit represents 16 to the power of one. And this digit represents 16 to the power of two. So when we expand it out, it's basically the coefficient times the power and we add all of them up. So remember E is the same thing as 14. So that is why it's 14 over here. Okay, and we can just use a calculator and add it up and it's 741. So this is just expanding um, using by, yeah, we're just expanding it in its um, hexadecimal notation. We'll get to the shortcut in a moment. The shortcut works for all the bases. And some of you asked if it's easier to convert from hex to binary to decimal or go directly to decimal. Is it easier to convert hex to binary to decimal? Um, that's a good question. I, I guess it's just up to your preference. Okay, whichever way you do it faster is the way I would use it. Because there is a shortcut to convert from hex to binary as well, which we will talk about at the end of today's class. Okay, now, so there is a shortcut in hex as well. It's the same thing, which is like, okay, this is a slightly different. Um, yeah, so we're going to divide 741 by 16. And this is basically just division, right? You guys know how to do division. And we get 46 with a remainder of 5. So 5 is the remainder. And next, we'll divide 46 by 16. And we get 2 remainder. 14. So 14 corresponds to E. So E is the remainder. And we, we, let's divide 2 by 16, which is just 0 remainder 2. So 2 is the remainder. So now we can go backwards. So our answer is 2E5 base 16. Okay. Does this make sense? Okay, let's move on. So this is just the reverse division method, the shortcut. So the shortcut works for all bases, um, not just binary or base 16. Okay, now let's talk about the octal number system. So this basically means base eight. Think of octopus, which has eight legs or octagon, which has eight sides. So the octal number system has eight digits is from zero to seven. And once again, some computer programmers use the octal number system. And okay, so let's learn how to count in octal number system. It's basically the same thing. Zero to seven is the same for decimal and octal, but seven is the highest digit in octal. So once you go beyond that, we have to carry over. So it becomes one zero. Um, so if you're not sure where the, where the one zero comes from, it's one zero is basically the same uh, um, across all number systems. For example, in binary, when we have zero one, we go to one zero. Um, when we're counting in just decimal, we have one, two, three, when we go to eight and then nine, it becomes one zero. So same thing in 
octal, um, when we go to the highest digit, the next one becomes one zero. So obviously when you go to like 99 and you have to carry over, it becomes one zero zero. Same thing, 999 becomes one zero 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 or 1000. So that's the same thing in all the other number systems. When you have to carry over, it always becomes one followed by a certain number of zeros. Okay, so from 11 to 17, I mean, in octal, um, you're just still adding one each time. There's no problems with this. But once you get to one seven, you have to carry over. So it becomes two zero, actually, because two is, you can use two in octal. So once you go from two zero to two seven, it becomes three zero and so on, four zero, five zero. So this is how we count in the octal um, number system. Okay, so converting from octal to decimal is the same thing. We're just going to expand. So when I see 37 or 37 base eight, this represents eight to the power of zero. This represents eight to the power of one. So we multiply the digit by the power of eight and we add them up. And this gives you 31 in base 10. Okay, so that is it for octal, I think. And I don't think... I don't think there is, um, I forgot a slide about how to go from decimal to octal, but it's the same thing. We can also use the um, shortcut method. Okay, so let's, let's convert 31 back to octal, let's say. So 31 divided by eight, is three, remainder seven. Um, let's see. So when we go backwards, our answer is three, seven in octal. So the shortcut works for all the bases. And now we're going to talk about some special conversions. So how do we convert from binary to octal? So one way you can do it, which is the way we have learned so far, is binary to decimal. And then we go from decimal to octal. So this is the way that you have you, you should probably know how to do, but there is um, a faster way, which is you can go directly from binary to octal or from octal to binary. But let's say if we wanna go from like base five to base seven, let's say, then we have to go from base five first to base 10 and then go from base 10 to base seven. But what's special about binary and octal is you don't have to first convert it to base 10 because there's a trick to convert it directly. So what's so special about base two and base eight? So we notice that eight is the same thing as two to the power of three. In other words, every one octal digit corresponds to three binary digits. So in this example here, 001010, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Zero, 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 one, oh, this is kind of long. Okay, so I'll just do it here then. So we have zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, two, one, zero, one. Okay, so using this observation that every octal digit corresponds to three binary digits, we can group the 
the binary number into three digits. So right here, I'm gonna group it into groups of three. So now we have grouped it into groups of three binary digits. Each binary digit is equivalent to one octal digit. So basically what that means is we can convert each of these groups directly to octal, and that will be um, our answer. So 101 is the same thing as five in octal. And 111 is the same thing as seven. This is four, this is zero, this is two, and this is one. So this is our answer in octal. And if you don't know how I got this, um, you can always just write it out on the side of your paper. So for example, let's I'm gonna just write this out really quickly. Binary and octal. So zero, zero, zero is zero, right? And one in binary is the same thing as one in octal. And so if we keep counting, this is zero, one, zero. This is the same thing as two in octal. And zero, one, one is the same thing as three in octal. One, zero, zero is the same thing as four in octal and so on. So that is how um, I know, for example, one, zero, zero is equal to four, right? Zero, zero, zero is zero. So every three digits corresponds to one octal digit. So we can use this fact to convert from binary to octal and vice versa really fast. Um, so same thing, if we're gonna go from octal to binary, so let's say we have this, we can write each digit in three binary digits. So why are the one and zero in that order? Um, basically, I can also add decimal right here. Zero, one, two, three, four, right? So basically I'm just counting. And I'm adding, um, for example, zero, zero, one, I'm adding um, zeros in front just for the placeholder. This can, this is just one, but I'm adding it, I'm adding two zeros before it. So it's zero, zero, one, because um, when we're working with these number systems, it's important that we um, know that the zero placeholders do have meaning. Yes, yeah, so why is binary not made into decimal? I'm not sure what your question means. Okay, so um, this, you might also encounter this, but what happens when you cannot group the numbers evenly into groups of three? If that's the case, then, so first of all, um, for example, let's say we're given a long chain, like for example, this is binary. Always start grouping from the right side. So you might be tempted to let's like group like this, but that's not the best way to do it. Um, you should always try to start from the right side. So start from the right side and then group into groups of three. But as you can see, I only have two digits left. I cannot group this into groups of three. So let's add a leading zero in front because you know, in any number system, leading zeros don't mean anything. They're just placeholders. So always start grouping from the right and then work your way towards the left. And if they don't group evenly, then you can add um, leading zeros to make it group evenly. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about um, the special conversion between binary and hexadecimal. So this is very similar to what we just did. We can observe that 16 is equal to two to the power of four. So every hex digit corresponds to four binary digits. So instead of grouping the binary digits in groups of three, we can instead um, group it in groups of four. Okay, so someone in the chat said 0 0.001 doesn't equal 0 0.0001. That's true. So when I mean leading digits um, don't actually have any 
value that's only for like whole numbers, not decimals. Um, but you won't see any decimals on the ACSL competition. So that's not something you have to worry about. You don't have to know like how to represent decimals in you don't know how to you don't have to know how to represent like decimal numbers in binary. That's not something you have to know for the contest. So we're gonna group um four binary digits into one hex digit. So that is how I have these groupings right here. And if you're not sure why 1101 is the same thing as D, we can always make a table for that. So for example, binary and X, 0, 0, 0, 0 in binary is the same thing as zero in hex. One is the same thing as this. So we know okay, we can go all the way up to F. And so you can just make this table on the side of your paper when you're doing the competition, if it helps you. Um, I also attached um, an image of this on the next slide, I think. So that's just as a reference when you're doing these problems. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just counting in binary, basically. Yeah, so, and F is one, 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 one. Can you make a chart? Yes, I did make a chart of this. I think it's on the next slide. And same thing for going from hex to binary. Each hex digit, you can rewrite that as a binary digit, but remember to add the leading zeros to make it groups of four. Um, I'll also send the slides to you um, after class so you can access this anytime. Oh, one more slide. So we use hexadecimal to represent colors um, oftentimes. Um, oftentimes you'll see something called RGB, which is red, green, blue. Um, so when you see, um, so let's let's go to this website. Yeah, so basically, um, for example, this red color right here, you can represent it as hex. So this is actually a hex value. That's just a cool application of hexadecimal in our daily lives. Um, I don't think you have to know this for the contest, but it's just a, it's just cool to know um, some of the applications of the hexadecimal number system. So this was the table I was talking about. It's an equivalence table between the four different types of number systems we learned today, decimal, bi um, binary, octal, and hexadecimal. So basically, how should you interpret this table um, across each column? These are all of these values are equal to each other, but in um, represented in these four different number systems. So for example, let's say 11. 11 is the same thing as 1011 in binary. And it's also equal to 13 in octal, which is equal to B in hexadecimal. So um, this chart is very helpful. Um, I would recommend you make one of these um, so that you can use it um, for the contest. And yeah, so we have five minutes left. I prepared some practice questions. So let's work on these. So try to work on these individually and I'll go over the answer. So let's first work on the first question. Convert 56 to binary.
Okay, I see many of you um, with the correct answer in the chat, so I will do this problem on the screen. So when we're converting from decimal to binary, we will, let's use the shortcut method because it's faster. So 56 divided by two is 28 with no remainder. And just to make sure what the remainder is, if it's even, it's no remainder. If it's odd, then there's a remainder of one. So 28 divided by two is 14 with no remainder. 14 divided by two is seven with no remainder. Seven divided by two is three with remainder one. And three divided by two is one remainder one. So going backwards, this is one, 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 zero, 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 base two. Okay, so let's now work on the second problem. Convert two B five base 16 to base 10. Okay, so I see many of you um, have answers in the chat. Um, this time I'm gonna ask someone to explain it on the screen. So does anyone want to explain this question? Any volunteers to explain? Um, <laughs> Feel free to um draw the board. Okay. No one wants to answer this question. Okay, then I will um explain this one. So two B five base sixteen. So let's write this, let's expand this. So this is, so remember this digit is 16 to the power of zero. This digit is 16 to the power of one. This digit is 16 to the power of two. So this is the same thing as two times 16 to the power of two. And what's B? What is B in decimal? So B is 11. 11 times 16 to the power of one plus five times 16 to the power of zero. So this is 512 plus 176 plus five. And if you do this correctly, you should get 693 in base 10. Okay, now let's do question number three, and we will wrap up today's lesson.
Okay, I see many of you have answers in the chat. Does anyone want to volunteer to explain this one? So the, I think the third question is the hardest because we are asked to convert from base 16 to octal. Uh, you can feel free to unmute. So I think the best way to do this one is to convert from base 16 first to base two, and then convert from base two to base eight. Of course, you can first convert from base 16 to base 10, and then convert from base 10 to base eight. But um, I think it's easiest to convert from base 16 to base two, and then convert from base two to base eight using the um, two methods we learned at the end of class. So for a 16, okay, so let's first convert to base two. So what is a in base in binary? So a is the same thing as 10 in decimal, right? A, the digit A represents 10, and 10 in binary is 1010. Okay, so 1010. Zero, zero. Now what's 4? Four? 4 in binary is 0100. Zero, zero, zero. So it's 100, zero, zero, but I'm adding the 0 in front as a placeholder. Okay, so now we know 4A16 is equal to 01001010. Zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero base two. Now let's convert it from base two to base eight. So let's group it into groups of three. So this is one group, this is one group, and we can't group this one, so let's just add a zero in front. And this is one group. Okay, so now let's, um, so every three binary digit equals one octal digit. So what is zero one zero in by in octal? I mean, does anyone want to answer this question? What is zero one zero binary in octal? Okay, so someone said in the chat, this is two. Um, so someone also said one zero. Zero one zero is the same as one zero, and one zero in binary is the same thing as two in um two in base eight. And how about zero zero one? So both of these are zero zero one, so we know they should be the same digit. Zero zero one in binary is just one in octal. So your final answer should be one one two octal. So there's this funny joke, which is there are like, there are 10 types of people in the world, those who know binary and those who don't. So what's funny about it is it's 10, but basically it's two in binary. So there's two types of people in the world, those who know binary and those who don't. Okay, so that is it for today's lesson. Um, I hope you all enjoyed learning about the different decimal systems. The first ACSL competition does not start until November. So please hold on to this knowledge because you will need it in um, the ACSL contest. We will do some real problems um, that are from ACSL um, from the previous years next week. So we will work on some uh, um, previous problems next week. And um, yeah, that's it for today's lesson. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, yes.